pandemic to comply with state and county official operational directives during the COVID-19 pandemic. Members of the public are viewing the meeting via the Zoom webinar platform. For all meeting participants, I'd like to stress to everyone the importance of speaking slowly, clearly, and directly into your microphone. Before speaking, it helps if you state your name and identify yourself for the record. Also, please be aware that all meeting participants are being recorded on the digital record of this Zoom meeting. Your continued participation is your implied consent to be part of the public record of this event. If you do not wish to be part of the public record, you should exit the meeting now. And if you followed the last 24 hours news cycles, this applies even if your face is a cat. Um, the Zoom conferencing technology allows the parties and each participating commissioner individual remote access to the meeting proceedings via their digital personal devices. Also, please note, so because of that, due to matters entirely outside our control, occasional disruptions to connectivity may occur for one or more members of the meeting at any given time. If such disruptions occur, please let us know and be patient as we try to restore the audiovisual signals so we can effectively conduct our business during the pandemic. For members of the public who may be participating via phone, um, I will talk during the portions for public testimony, whether people wish to raise your hands. If you wish to raise your hand and you're calling in by phone, use star nine to virtually raise your hand. And then if you press star six, that will signal to the meeting host that you wish to unmute. I will repeat those directions as well. My name is Jonathan Lee K.K. Scheuer. I currently have the honor and pleasure of serving as the LUC chair. Along with me, Commissioners Axon, Chang, Okuda, and Wong, our LUC Executive Officer Daniel Oredenker, our Chief Planner Scott Derrickson, our Chief Clerk Riley Hakoda, our Deputy Attorney General Linda Chow, our Program Specialist Natasha Quinones, and the Court Reporter Jean McManus are all on the island of Oahu. Commissioner Nancy Cabral is on Hawaii Island. Commissioner Lee Ohigashi is on Maui, and Commissioner Dan Giovanni is on Kauai. We currently have eight seated commissioners of a possible nine. Our first order of business is adoption of the January 28, 2021 minutes. Mr. Hakoda or Mr. Derrickson, has anybody submitted written testimony on the adoption of the minutes? Chair, this is Riley. Uh, we don't have any testimony on the minutes. Okay. Is there anybody who's participating in this meeting as a member of the public um, in the attendees area who wishes to testify? If so, um, use your raise hand function on Zoom. I don't see anybody calling in, so I won't repeat those directions. Is there anybody who wishes to testify on adoption of the minutes? Seeing none, commissioners, are there any comments or questions? Uh, Commissioner Cabral? I move to adopt the minutes of January 28th. Okay, is there a second to Commissioner Cabral's motion? Chair? Yes. This Commissioner Wong, I second. Okay, a motion's been made by Commissioner Cabral and Commissioner, um, seconded by Commissioner Wong. Any discussion on the motion? If not, commissioners, um, if. All in favor say aye and also raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Are any commissioners opposed? If not, the motion carries. Um, our next agenda item is our tentative meeting schedule. Uh, Mr. Ordenker, would you please go over that with us? Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Tomorrow we will uh, also be here, Zoom meeting, to discuss foreign agricultural land process. It's an informational se uh, session for the commissioners and the public, um, presented by staff. On February 24th, we will be hearing the Barry Trust motion, it's a district boundary amendment, um, also by Zoom, important agricultural land designation uh, from the county 
city and county of Honolulu may begin on that date, uh, time dependent. Um, we will take up the city and county IAL submission on February 25th. On March 10th, we will be hearing the Hokua Place DBA matter, uh, it's a Kauai matter. Yeah. Um, and we will also be hearing that on March 11th. Uh, we also anticipate those hearings to be held by Zoom. <clears throat> on March 24th, we will be hearing, we will be adopting uh, the order for the Barry Trust uh, matter. Uh, if necessary, and we will be also be continuing any business associated with the county, city and county of Honolulu IAL submission, as well as on March 25th. On April 14th, we will be hearing uh, the Windward Hotel matter, as well as the DR uh, Amaui declaratory ruling motion. On April 15th, we will be hearing. Uh, a, a status conference from the on the Kula Ridge matter. Um, that's also a Maui matter. On April 28th, uh, we will be hearing the Kamalani motion to extend time. Um, on May 12th, we will be having a hearing on the AES West Oahu solar matter. On May 20, 13th, uh, we will be taking up the Pohakea matter on Maui. Um, we anticipate, oh, by the way, all these meetings being by Zoom until further notice. On uh, May 26th, we will be continuing uh, the Pohakea po special permit matter if necessary. On June 9th, we will take up a cooler, anticipated Cooler Ridge order to show cause. Um, and that takes us through the end of the firm calendar and we anticipate further items coming in in the next few days. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ordenker. Commissioners, are there any questions for Dan? Commissioners, about our schedule? No? Other than that's a lot of work ahead of us. I see Nancy's head nodding. Well, we're going to rate, we're going to double your salary, Nancy. Um, our next order of business is an action meeting on docket number A02737, the University of the Nation Kona's Incorporated's motion requesting the LUC to A, be an accepting authority for an environmental impact statement, and B, determine whether the proposed action warrants the preparation of an environmental impact statement preparation notice, or EISPN. Let me first update the record. On January 21st, 2021, the University of Nations Kona filed its motion requesting the Land Use Commission to both be a the accepting authority for an EIS and be determined the proposed whether the proposed action warrants the preparation of an EIS to be initiated with the preparation of an EIS PM, as well as a memorandum in support of the motion and a declaration of Derek P. Simon and Exhibit A. On January 29th, the State Office of Planning filed its statement of no opposition to the University of the Nation Kona's motion to designate the LUC as the approving authority under HRS chapter 343 and the authority to prepare an EISPN. On February 1st, the County of Hawaii Planning Department filed the county's response to the University of the Nation's motion. On February 2nd, the commission mailed and emailed the meeting notice and agenda for the February 10th and 11th, 2021 meeting to be held via virtual interactive conference technology to the parties and to our statewide Oahu and Hawaii Island mailing lists. The meeting notice and agenda were also filed with the Lieutenant Governor's Office and posted electronically to the Commission's website. Now let me go over our procedures for today. First, I will give the pet petitioner the opportunity to comment on the Commission's policy governing reimbursement of hearing expenses. I will then recognize any written public testimony that has been submitted on this adder matter, identifying the person or organization who submitted the testimony. I will then call for any individuals who have pre-registered to provide public testimony on the docket. Following that, I will offer the opportunity for public testimony to anybody who's attending the meeting. After the completion of all public testimony, the petitioner, University of Nations Kona, will 
make its presentation. After the petitioner's presentation, we will receive questions and comments from the commissioners. Following that, we'll hear from the county with questions and comments from the commissioners. Following that, the Office of Planning and the same. The petitioner will be given a chance for any rebuttal if necessary, and the commission will then make final deliberations of the parties before, or final questions of the parties before beginning deliberations. And from time to time, about every 50 minutes to an hour, I will be calling for a break. Are there any questions on our procedures for today, starting with the petitioner, Mr. Simon? Uh, good morning, Chair. No, no questions from the petitioner. Okay, and why don't you do your appearances here as well, since that was omitted from my script. Of course. Uh, good morning, Chair. Commissioners Derek Simon appearing on behalf of Petitioner University of the Nation's Kona, Inc. Uh, with me appearing via Zoom is Jeff Overton of G70. Thank you very much. Um, and um, let's now hear from what questions on our procedures and appearances from the County of Hawaii. Um, either Mr. Kern or Mr. Darrow, or I cannot see in your conference room who's actually there because you're kind of small on your camera. Good morning, Mr. Chair. I'm going to step into the conference room. Give me one second. Thank you, Mr. Kern. So um, if, you, if your counsel or you could state who's appearing for the county today and also whether you have any questions on our procedures. However, we are not picking up any audio from your conference room. You don't appear to be on mute, so there appears to be another problem. Uh, Mr. Chair, so the, the room with our core council, uh, there's an audio issue with the audio we're working on right now, but we have no questions on procedure. We're, we're okay to move forward. Thank okay. you so much. For the record, um, Mr. Kern, who is your corp council representing you today? Uh, Diana Mellon Lacey is going to be our corporation council, and we have Maya Jackson as well as one of our uh, uh, division managers, and uh, me, Zendo Kern, as the planning director. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Office of Planning. Good morning, Deputy Attorney General Brian Yi. On behalf of the Office of Planning, with me, Rodney Funakoshi from the Office of Planning. We have no questions or concerns about the procedures. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Simon, have you revert viewed HAR 1515 45.1 with regard to the reimbursement of hearing expenses? And if so, what is your position? Uh, good morning, Chair. Uh, university is aware and familiar with the uh, uh, Commission's uh, policies on reimbursements and, and agree to abide by it. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Simon. Now moving on to public testimony. I had earlier been informed there was no written public testimony or any individuals pre-registered to provide testimony on this matter. Is that still the case, Mr. Hakoda? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. Okay. Is there anybody who's an attendee in the attendee portion of the Zoom meeting who wishes to testify on this matter? Again, use the raise your hand function or if you are calling in by phone, press star nine. Seeing none, there is no public testimony on this matter today. We can go ahead and you can start with, oh, actually, before you start with your presentation, Mr. Simon, um, I wanna see if there's any disclosures on behalf of any of the commissioners. I will note that my wife works for the same firm that the consultant Mr. Overton works for. She is not part of this project and is not involved in any way whatsoever. I believe I can be fair and impartial on this matter, but I um, wanted to offer the opportunity to any of the parties to raise an objection or concern on this matter. If any of the parties or my fellow commissioners raise an objection or concern, I'm more than happy to turn over the gavel for consideration of that um, to Vice Chair Cabral, um, starting with Mr. Simon. No, no objection from the petitioner, Chair. Okay. Um, from um, Hawaii County's Council. Hopefully we might, or Mr. Kern. 
Yeah, Mr. Chair, I apologize. We're dealing with that. Uh, we can't hear, I couldn't hear anything in the other room. We're trying to reboot our, our conference system. Okay. Could you repeat um, your question to me? I'm really sorry. So I disclosed that um, my wife, my spouse, works for the same planning firm that the consultant to the University of the Nations Kona works for. She has no direct involvement or even indirect involvement in the matters that are being consulted on. However, I'm giving all of the parties the opportunity to raise concerns or object to my continued participation in these proceedings. And um, for the record, it might be best if your counsel answered for you, but I suppose you could also bind the county. I feel um, I, we, we have no objections to this. Okay, thank you very thank much. If you talk it over later and you have an objection, you can we'll certainly let back. you know. I'll run it by him right now. And I have other stuff to do. So. <laughs> I apologize um, for the, uh, the technical difficulties. We'll get this straightened out. Okay. And Nancy is is urging that she yes. Okay. Um, Office of Planning, Mr. Yi. We have no objection. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Are there any other declarations of our, um, not declarations, are there any other? Um, and notices from the commission. I've lost myself here. Disclosures. 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 There we go. Thank you. Disclosures. Any What's a co-chair for? Huh? <laughs> thank, thank you, my, Madam Vice Chair. Okay. Um, seeing none, Mr. Simon, do you wish to proceed with your presentation? I, I do. Thank you, Chair. And, and good morning, Chair, once again, and, and commissioners. Thank you very much for um, gathering today to, to consider the motion. And thank you very much to staff um, for helping us coordinate both the pre-file and review of the motion, as well as getting uh, on the agenda today. We, we're, the university is, is very grateful for those efforts. Um, just to kind of run down where we left last left off on this docket was the July 23rd uh, hearing held virtually, but I guess theoretically in Hilo. You know, at that time, the university left, you know, with its commitment to proceed diligently with, with beginning the chapter 343 compliance project uh, process for this project. Um, you know, based on the new project description described in the motion of men um, that the university filed last March. Um, the university met very shortly thereafter with executive officer and Mr. Derrickson um, to plan sort of what the contents of this current filing should be and appropriate courses of action. Um, we reached out to, to, to staff in, in October to coordinate a, a, hear, a filing and hearing date. Um, and, and after that, we, we, we circulated a um, pre-filing or early draft of the motion, um, which we believe is straight, pretty straightforward um, for the commission to consider today. Um, the motion essentially asked two things that the, the commission agreed that's the appropriate agency to be the accepting authority to process an EIS for this project. And that the commission authorizes the university to go directly to uh, the preparation um, of an environmental impact statement through a prep notice um, as the appropriate course of action for this project. Um, we, the, the, as you may recall, back in July uh, at the hearing, we, we, we informed the commission that the infrastructure memorandum we filed in support of the motion of men um, indicated that there would need to be a new sewer line um, installed below Kuikini uh, Highway. Uh, which would obviously, you know, trigger Chapter 343 under the, the use of state or county land, um, and, and so that's why we're here today. Again, this this motion is 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 primarily procedural and sort of the the requesting the commission uh, permission to, to to formally begin the Chapter 343 process um, through the prep, you know, publication of the prep notice um, and, and the whole you know scoping meetings and and that consultation process that begins. Um, we, we're appreciative of the support um, we received from the county and the nice comments that the county had on the motion, as well as the no opposition from the Office of Planning. I don't think there's a ton more for us to add beyond what's in our papers that we filed, um, but we're certainly available, both myself and Mr. Overton, to answer any questions that the, the commissioners or the other parties may have. Thank you very much, Mr. Simon. Um, I want to quickly check now that um, Hawaii County is back up. Um, can we do an audio check? Can we hear you? Can you hear me? This is Diana Mellon Lacey. Yes, Diana, we can hear you. Thank you very much. Great. Okay. And uh, Mr. Kern and Ms. Jackson are in the conference room with me. Okay. Great. Thank you for that. Um, 
Now, um, following Mr. Simon's presentation, we have questions for um, the petitioner from the commissioners. Commissioners, are there any questions for Mr. Simon? I'm looking around and I'm seeing none. We can move on to the presentation from Hawaii County. Uh, this is Diana Mellon Lacey. Uh, I think our position is reflected in our filing of February 1st, and we have no questions uh, for Mr. Simon at this time. So, Thank you. Sorry, to clarify our procedures, and perhaps this was due to audio, um, at this point in our proceedings, you, you, other than if you had anything to add to your written filings, you would do that. And then I will open it up to questions from the commissioners for you. Is that clear? Okay, uh, we have nothing to add to our filing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, are there questions for Hawaii County? Seeing none, Mr. Yee. It's nice to see you in a suit again, Mr. Yee. Thank you. Uh, it's been a while since we <laughs> had this on. Um, the, the Office of Planning has no objections. Uh, it's a fairly procedural motion um, and fairly simple in its, in its uh, basic request. So we have no objection. Happy to answer any questions. Okay. Commissioners, are there any questions for the Office of Planning? Well, y'all are making this too easy. So, um, I, I, I will offer the opportunity for Mr. Simon to do any redirect, though that hardly seems necessary at this point. Do you have any redirect or any final no, comments? No, no, redir no redirect. Just thanks again to the county and, and Office of Planning for the support. Okay. Commissioners, any questions for any of the parties? Seeing none, commissioners, I will entertain a motion that the LUC grant or deny the University of the Nation Kona's motion requesting the LUC to be A, the accepting authority for an environmental impact statement, and B, determine that the proposed action warrants the preparation of an EIS to be initiated by the preparation of an EIS preparation notice. Commissioners, what is your pleasure? Commissioner Cabral. So moved exactly what you just said. It was so elegantly put, um, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you, Commissioner. Is there a second to Commissioner Cabral's motion? <laughs> Commissioner Okuda. Uh, this is Gary Okuda. I second the motion. Okay, a motion has been made by Commissioner Cabral and seconded by Commissioner Okuda. Um, does the Movant or the seconder wish to speak to the motion or does any commissioner wish to discuss the motion before us? Chairman. Commissioner Wong. Uh, I would like to make a friendly amendment if possible. Okay. This is to allow, um, authorize our executive director to send a letter to OEQC on behalf of the commission on this issue. Okay, so there's a friendly amendment amendment to the motion to allow the executive officer to send notice to the Office of Environmental Quality Control or OEQC um, regarding this matter. Um, does the Movant agree? Yes, I do. I'll accept Does that. the seconder agree? Yes. Okay, that's the motion before us then. Is there any further discussion? Not Seeing none, Mr. Ordenker, a motion has been made um, by Commissioner Cabral, seconded by Commissioner Okuda, and they've m accepted the friendly amendment. Would you please poll the commission? Thank you, Mr. Chair. The motion is to, uh, the motion is to grant the mo the petitioner's motion for the Land Use Commission to be the accepting authority and to move directly to an EIS, as well as to authorize the executive officer <clears throat> to file the appropriate letters with the Office of Environmental Quality Control. Commissioner Cabral. Yes. Commissioner Okuda. Yes. Commissioner Wong. Yes. Commissioner Ohigashi. Yes. Commissioner Giovanni. Aye. 
Commissioner Chang. Yes. Chair Scheuer. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The motion passes unanimously with eight votes. Well, thank you very much to the parties for the extremely efficient presentations on this matter. Oh, Commissioner man. Axon. Commissioner oh. Axon, I'm sorry. Both, yes. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I, I guess too efficient, Mr. Ordenker. I apologize, um, Mr. Axon, I did not track that. Um, is there any other, Mr. Ordenker, what's the vote tally? Um, the, it's eight affirmative votes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. With that, Ms. Commissioner Cabral. Well, I didn't want to have it be part of the motion and the action because it's not specific to this petition. But I, you know, we do this a lot. It seems that procedurally, we almost always become the accepting authority for, uh, and it would seem that all of these people come together and all of this effort, and sometimes they all fly in and all of this, it seems like in our procedures, there should be some more efficient um, method to which we could become the accepting authority for the um, environmental impact statements and that without having to <clears throat> call the entire party together. And I don't know that, I'm just thinking that, you know, I like efficiency being a capitalist like I am and stuff. So if, if it's just something we could maybe think about how our procedures, and I don't know if the legislature has to make that decision or something, that's that's above my pay grade of zero. So, but um, anyway, just just an idea that um, we, that maybe the staff in their spare time could take a look at. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Cabral for those comments. Thank you, Commissioner Cabral. Staff will look into whether or not we can make an amendment to our rules to do that. Okay. Um, in the alternative, you, you could consider a delegation to the executive director for him to just approve uh, or to the chair uh, to approve being the accepting authority, but to require that the EIS come back to the full commission. Thank you, Ms. Chow. Commissioners, um, since yeah, thank you. Oh, sorry. Uh, Commissioner Okuda, followed by Commissioner Cabral. Yeah, Chair, if if I could be the naysayer here, um, it, it is true that it appears that uh, routine stuff could be done more efficiently, but I think for public transparency, this process works well. Um, there's always a possibility that. Uh, individuals might or organizations might believe that the process is rigged. In other words, the, the people who are asked to be the accepting authority were asked to be the accepting authority because they would give not impartial review of the final EIS. So, um, you know, I, I, I just think um, there, there are reasons why, even though this seems like a very routine, mundane type of motion, uh, having it out in the open so that the public and the citizens can object if they think that some other agency or entity should be the accepting authority. Uh, I think it helps with uh, the process. Thank you. Commissioner Cabral. Um, thank you, uh, fellow Commissioner Okuda, for that perspective. And I clearly want to make sure we're very open and upfront to the public and all parties involved. And I would love it though, if we could come up between um, the AG office and um, our executive um, directors there to come up with a way that we might be able to do both things and keep it open. And yet, because again, the final decision would become come back to the commission. So maybe there's just a way to have it all be satisfied. If we could just kind of look at it to save, again, efficiency was my, my intent without compromising um, the righteousness of the process. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Cabral. Commissioner Axon, followed by Commissioner Chang. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanna, I just wanna say that I agree with the Commissioner Okura on this one. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Axon. Commissioner Chang. Yeah. Thank you, and I and I appreciate Commissioner Cabral's desire to be efficient, but I have found that in many instances, I mean, this one is, in my view, an aberration, where we had no discussion. But in most, many of our cases where we are, the, the issue comes up about the EIS. There is, um, 
discussion presentation, there's guidance from the commissioners as to what we want to see in the EIS. So I do think that there is benefit to having um, discussion. And I'm not too sure how best to address Commissioner Cabral's um, you know, issue, but I think that there is benefits to having a public process for um, these motions. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Chang. Are there further comments on this matter from the commissioners? Um, I will note, um, I guess, just for this discussion um, that sometimes there is concern in the community over who, uh, to echo Commissioner Okuda's, um, sometimes there's a, a, a series of possible choices of who might be the accepting authority for a document. Um, there's some flexibility there and there's some implications perhaps to who becomes the accepting authority. And so I do think it serves the public's interest to at least provide the opportunity for them to express any concerns over our taking up a motion to be the accepting authority in a particular matter. So, um, but I appreciate, I, I do, despite perhaps not being as fervent a capitalist as Commissioner Cabral, I do appreciate efficiency as well, which I will note we have lost now in this proceeding, um, <laughs> thanks to Commissioner Cabral's questions. Um, I think we have nothing more for the petitioner. Um, thank you very much. And um, we're ready to move on to our next agenda item, um, which is the city and county of Honolulu's important agricultural lands designation matter. However, co commissioner, um, however, the, given that the matter on the agenda is scheduled for both today and tomorrow, and I believe this discussion is actually better held over one day rather than split over two days, my suggestion would be to recess until tomorrow till we can take up the IL presentation by staff. Are there any objections from my commissioners to this move? Seeing none, we will recess until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Mahalo.